Well, thanks, everybody. Um, I was asked to speak about heartworm testing and when we do it, why we do it, and really what it means to have a positive heartworm test. So I want to start out by asking everyone a question. Does this dog have heartworm? And it's not meant to be a trick question, right? But we don't know if this dog has heartworm. Of course we don't know. We have to test it. We have to get the test results and then make that decision. This is my dog. This is Freckles. Freckles is a retired research beagle. My husband and I adopt retired research beagles from the veterinary colleges. We've been doing that for years. And I, of course, adore Freckles, so I could spend the entire 15 minutes talking about him. Um, but he's a very well cared for dog. He lives inside. He spends most of his time on a couch when he's not bouncing off the walls because he is a beagle. He's on preventive all year long. Um, we live in a moderate endemic area, Oklahoma. So odds are he's not infected. But Freckles is tested every year without fail because I want to be sure he's not infected. Okay? And so that's the, the difference is that we really have to do the testing to answer that question. Now, my neighborhood, even though Oklahoma's moderate heartworm prevalence, my neighborhood's actually a hot spot for heartworm transmission. And I know that most of your clients don't have PCR data on infective mosquito rates in the area immediately surrounding their home. But thanks to my colleagues in entomology, I do know that we have a risk of heartworm infection. And I do know he's on preventive and he's compliant. But I also make sure he's tested every year. Okay, with every 12 months, every dog should be tested. Now, Freckles needed a dental um, procedure. He had an extraction that he needed to do, and one of my friends in town did that for me. I don't do um, veterinary practice that requires anesthesia. So she did some pre-anesthetic workup prior to doing the extraction, and she called me to say, hey, we found something interesting on Freckles' blood work. And I said, oh, and because he's getting older, right? And she said, um, yeah, so we just did a heartworm test, you know, routine. Just do that. And she's a slow talker. And as you can tell, I'm a very fast talker. So I was getting um, quite anxious at this point. She said, and he came up positive. And at this point, I freaked out. And she said, for Ehrlichia. And I went, oh, he, yeah, he was an Ehrlichia research dog before we adopted him. So yes, he's positive on Ehrlichia. What about heartworm? And she said, oh, no, he's negative on heartworm. You have him on preventive, don't you? And I said, yes, yes, he's on preventive. So I understand the anxiety associated with heartworm testing. I share that as, as a pet owner, and I think we're all aware of that as veterinarians. So you know, the, the recommendation is clear. When do we test dogs for heartworm? Every 12 months. American Heartworm Society has been very clear with that recommendation. Dogs should be tested um, for infection every 12 months. And so that first question is easy to address. Test every dog, every year, always. Okay? And we think about, you know, what does that mean? Like, why do we test every dog every year? And really every dog, you know, as, as veterinarians, we're analytical, we kind of pull that apart. So what about um, shelter dogs or dogs um, that are part of a rescue rescue group. Do those dogs need to be tested? Absolutely those dogs need to be tested. They're at high risk of infection. They likely did not receive preventive and they may well be infected. And so yes, those dogs need to be tested. What about dogs that are on preventive? Do they need to be tested? Yes. Right? We know that um, not everyone's compliant with administering preventive. Not every dog's compliant with receiving the preventive. And we also know that preventives can fail. And so we have to test those dogs to make sure they're, they're free of infection or to identify the infection so that we can treat them accordingly. And you know, what about, what about we can keep playing that sort of what if game? And I think we do that a lot because I have these conversations with my students and with veterinarians, and they'll say things like, well, what if, what if the dog's um, been negative three years in a row? Okay, so we've got three years of negative tests. Then can I skip the next year? That dog needs to be tested the next year. Things change, right? It's great that he's been negative three years in a row. That's wonderful news. Let's make sure he's negative fourth year, fifth year, and throughout the rest of his life. Or if infected, let's find that out so we can do something about it. Um, what if it's perfect compliance based on purchase history? I can document that in the clinic records. That dog, the owner has purchased the preventive reliably, so we have compliance. And that's absolutely wonderful. And we do need to reward that. And we can reward that with a discount on future compliant preventive purchase, with a discount on the test. 
We could even comp the test, right, a, a free test. Not a get out of test free card, but a free test. So we can reward those, those owners that are um, doing everything they can to protect their pets. So there's lots of those what if questions we can ask. But really, the test every year is so important um, to make sure that we're evaluating the health of the dog. And the reason for that, the when is every 12 months. The why is early detection. And we know that. We know that's true with so many diseases. It's very um, accepted in our culture to recognize that early detection and intervention makes a difference in chronic disease. And heartworm is a chronic, insidious disease. So early detection leads to earlier treatment. Earlier treatment removes those worms sooner and results in a better outcome. That's the reason that we're testing every 12 months, so that when we find those infections, we can intervene. We can do something about it. And we have to intervene, because what heartworm does to the pulmonary artery, to the entire cardiovascular system of the dog, is wreak havoc. The longer those worms are there, the more damage that is done. And we can see that even in dogs that were just infected for a few months, even experimental infections, where we know that dogs only been infected six months or eight months, so the antigen test has just become positive. If you run your gloved hand over the lining of the vessel, the intimal layer lining the pulmonary artery, you can feel how roughened and damaged it is from the presence of those worms. And so we know that damage is done very early in infection, but the longer those worms persist, the longer um, the damage uh, continues and the more pathology accumulates. So we have these, this mass of worms in the pulmonary artery, the foot-long Dyrophilaria immatis worm in the pulmonary artery. It's occluding blood flow. It's causing turbulent blood flow. It's causing inflammation just by its presence there. But as the blood flows through the pulmonary artery on its way to the lungs, wishing, you know, the, the goal is to have that blood be oxygenated and then spread to the body, and we have a healthy, happy um, dog. Instead, it encounters this tangled mass of worms, and the heart has to work that much harder and there's turbulent blood flow, so now it's bumping um, off the walls of the artery, creating mechanical damage. And that happens every time the heart pumps. So it's happening 80, 90, 120 times a minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as that infection persists. So that damage really accumulates over time. And something that's particularly sad is the more active the dog is, the more damage that ensues from the presence of the heartworm infection. So the owner, by playing with the dog, running with the dog, interacting with the dog in the way we all love to do, is actually adding to the damage that heartworm creates in the dog. It's exacerbating disease. By playing with our dogs, we're actually hurting them. And that's, that's a pretty tragic situation. And we do see radiographic changes, for sure. So we see that right heart enlargement, maybe enlargement of the pulmonary vessels, uh, pulmonary interstitial pattern from the inflammation. Okay, so, and we, we can sometimes see, of course, exercise intolerance that goes along with that clinically. So we can document that that damage is happening. And we know it's happening when we have the opportunity to examine the heart and lungs from a dog that's been infected with heartworm. But in order to intercept that infection and try and restore the dog to health, we have to have a diagnosis. And so that's why, that's why we test. Now the third question I was asked to address is what does it mean? And I have to admit when I started putting this content together, that question has an existential feel to me. Like what does it mean, right? It's almost like, I don't know if you all remember the double rainbow meme from a few years ago, but it's so beautiful. What does it mean? And unfortunately, a positive heartworm test doesn't induce that sort of ecstatic joy that the double rainbow did. And if you haven't seen the double rainbow meme, I encourage you to Google it um, soon and watch the video because it's very um, wonderful how awe-inspiring nature can be. But what does a positive test mean? Sort of the opposite of that ecstatic joy. A positive test is a crisis. It's a crisis for the dog, for the owner, and for the veterinarian. It's incredibly sad. I mean, when you think about what a positive test means, it means most likely you have heartworm, right? And that means you have a chronic 
debilitating, potentially fatal infection that will require a protracted and long-term treatment, expensive treatment as well. But it also means you know, that dog's cardiovascular system is likely permanently damaged. Now, it may not be damaged in a way that will present itself clinically after we treat, but for some dogs, they never really recover from the damage that heartworm has done. Um, there's a saying in the southern US that, that dog don't hunt. Um, and it's similar because after a hunting dog is infected with heartworm, he'll never hunt as well as he would have. He'll never be the dog he could have been had he not been infected with heartworm. So heartworm is a um, tragic diagnosis. It's a very sad diagnosis. But a positive test, a positive antigen test in and of itself doesn't necessarily indicate the dog has heartworm. And that's, that's hard to um, understand. When we see the sensitivity and specificity profiles of heartworm tests, they're phenomenal. Heartworm tests are extremely, exquisitely sensitive and specific. And we've gotten so much value out of being able to test dogs with heartworm antigen tests over the last few decades. Countless canine lives have been saved because antigen tests were able to detect the infections and we as veterinarians were able to treat those patients and restore them to health. And so I'm amazed at heartworm antigen tests and how exquisitely sensitive they are. One adult female worm, right? They pick up the antigen produced by just one adult female worm in many cases, that's incredible. And how incredibly specific they are. But that sensitivity and specificity is determined based on a population of dogs, about half of whom have heartworm. That's how we do those analyses. And then we take those tests and we apply them to our patients. And unless we're working solely in shelter medicine in the southern United States, it's unlikely that half of our patients have heartworm. We know the prevalence is much lower in well-cared-for pet dogs because they're on preventive. Right? That's the definition of a well-cared-for pet dog. It's tested every year, and it's on preventive. And so for client-owned dogs, a positive test indicates additional workup is needed. We don't stop at a single positive antigen test. In fact, we need to confirm those positive antigen tests before we start treatment. That's really key. Now, we can confirm with a microfilaria test. We can find the microfilaria of diaphilaria imitis. That's the easiest way to confirm the positive heartworm test. You can do that right in clinic. But if you have a dog that's microfilaria negative, a cult infection or a microfilaremic dog, you can confirm with a second different antigen test. So we can still tell before treatment, yes, this definitely is heartworm. That wasn't a false positive. And we see false positives from um, antigens from other nematodes, from just uh, proteins in the blood, it can happen on some of the different tests. And so we always confirm with a second test. So in terms of what a positive test means clinically, it means first review the history. Is this a low-risk dog? Are you surprised at this positive test? And if so, you know, realize false positives are very rare. The tests are extremely specific, but they can occur. And then confirm the positive before any treatment. And I say that because treatment will actually interfere with the performance of the antigen tests. And so we confirm before we start treatment. Treatment, putting the dog on preventive, will interfere with the ability to use a microfilaria test. So we have to confirm. And then if confirmed with either a microfilaria test or if that's negative, a second different antigen test, then we treat then we proceed with treatment. And so this is a Russian proverb that was popularized in the United States in the 1980s. It sort of came into our vernacular. I don't know if anybody recognizes it in the Russian. But it sort of relates to heartworm testing and sort of how we interpret what does the positive test mean. And this phrase interpreted in English is trust, but verify. The tests are very good. They're very sensitive and specific. But in a dog on preventive, a low-risk dog, in a dog in a low endemic area, we want to verify those positives before we put that dog through a long, difficult, protracted treatment. Thank you.